Hey everyone, Happy New Year. Some great news on the Samsung front, even before Samsung CES 2021 conference, they just announced the Galaxy Book Ion 2 by showing an official unboxing on their YouTube channel. This is surprising because with the current Ion, the normal Ion or Ion 1, they didn't have an official unboxing until I want to say about a month ago so at least eight months after the ION came out unfortunately with the first one the one I have they never sent it to any reviewers as far as I know all the handful of reviewers that I watch on YouTube none of them reviewed it and that's because they were never sent it I even specifically asked for mobile tech review and for Jared's tech to review it and they actually responded to me and said sorry uh, Samsung never sent it and everyone else is, is sending their laptops why would I you know go out of my way to purchase it when you know I already have too many laptops to, re to review that was what they both said and so hopefully in 2021 Samsung goes a little bit different and actually sends the ION 2 out to reviewers now I tried to find more details unfortunately I think we're gonna have to wait until the end of CES after they make everything official official and go in more in depth about the specs of the ION 2 but this is a product I'm really looking forward to because I am a happy owner of the ION 1 in fact what you're watching right now is gameplay of me playing the uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War I'm pretty sure this was from the beta uh, on my ION 2 and unfortunately this was not me playing with their you know, only on the device, I had to connect an external graphics card in order to play it because the, I mean, naturally, it, you can't play really modern games on just a CPU. And so I had to connect an, an external graphics card. But, you know, honestly, it's worked fine. Um, you know, unfortunately, the, the gra external graphics card I, I've been using for the last six months has been, you know, it's been fine. You know, it, it's gotten the job done. I've done a lot of videos on it. If you check out videos from the last half of 2020 on my channel, I go way into depth on the external graphics card. I did recently purchase another one, the RTX 2070 gaming box, and I'm really looking forward to getting that. I'll be able to play with it in about a couple weeks. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that, seeing how it, how it performs on the ION. I should double my FPS and be able to finally play at 1080p full settings. Um, as opposed to this, which is about average 30 FPS, everything low settings on 1080p. So anyway, let's keep talking about the Galaxy Book Ion 2. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I, unfortunately, there aren't too many specific details right now. They're just so generic. Uh, they do have, as I mentioned, an unboxing video on their official YouTube page. And it looks the exact same I mean every they show every piece of it they show the ejector pin to you know with the removal removable SD card slot which is great I'm glad that they still have it um, they show you know the keyboard and the back and everything everything looks exactly the same the biggest difference is the color scheme the fingerprint reader is in the same place but instead of it being highlighted blue it's you know just this white color the same as the rest of the keyboard and instead of having a blue kind of uh, glossy rainbow uh, piece in the back on the hinge it's now just a solid white color but I guess it's still a little glossy and when the light sh shines on it it still has that kind of rainbow effect in the light uh, personally I mean without having seen it in person it I think I prefer the current ion it looks a lot better I like the fingerprint highlight because your eyes are naturally drawn when you look at the keyboard to that fingerprint sensor that just stands out it's like okay put my finger right there and I think having that blue or dark purple highlight on the hinge on the back on the ION 1 looks really good I, I don't think the new one looks good although the overall other than the color looks like the shape and size and all the ports look exactly the same and in exactly the same place and I know this because when you just go on YouTube and, and type in Galaxy Book Ion or Ion 2 filter by you know the last week or two six days ago somebody in Korea uploaded a video literally comparing them side by side and putting them on top of each other and next to each other so you can see exactly what they look like and this person is comparing the 15 inch versions they both have 
the two very long vents on the bottom. Same size, same shape, same place. And everything looks exactly the same. Even the USB 3.0 slots are in the same place. Everything looks the same. I think the biggest difference will be the internals. And the most obvious is Intel's 11th gen CPUs. And these are gonna be really, really good because of their, well actually I'm not even sure if they're gonna have the XE graphics on them. I'm assuming they will, but it's kind of hard to tell if it's actually going to include like really the actual decent XE graphics. I'm assuming they're going to be there, but it, apparently it's going to be significantly better than the 10th gen Intel UHD graphics. And so that should mean that, you know, older games run better. You know, I've even without any GPU on my current Ion, I've been able to play basically PS3, Xbox 360 era games just fine. You know, the original Fear been able to play Rainbow Six Vegas 2 on it, runs fine, uh, Full Spectrum Warrior, those kind of older games, 15, 20 years old, uh, those games run fine even though they just run at 30 FPS and you have to dumb down, dumb down the settings, so maybe you'd actually be able to play at full 60 FPS or with slightly higher settings. Um, but the good thing is they do say in the video that it comes with an optional NVIDIA MX450. Now, I'm apprehensive about this because the current ION also comes with a NVIDIA GPU, the MX350, but unfortunately that's only in Europe and Asia. For whatever reason, they decided not to have an NVIDIA GPU even as an option on the North American computers, which really harms its value. Um, However, it depends on your use case. You know, you could look at this with two sides. Yes, unfortunately, it doesn't come with a GPU, but at the same time, it's not really that super powerful of a GPU. You know, honestly, I'd prefer to have it because then I could pretty much game anywhere. I would probably get similar performance compared to my RX uh, 560 eGPU that I have right now. But that would be really nice to at least have the, have the option um, because just playing games on the regular CPU it's perfect for you know older games, but newer games you don't even have the option. You can't even launch them, and so I would at least like to have that option for mobile gaming, especially in an ultrabook. That's really really great. But you know if you can, you know imagine yourself just okay. You know tell yourself you're just going to carry around a little eGPU and have you know a modern card in it. Um, you could definitely get around that. Honestly, if I were to buy things again. Uh, you know, lugging around an extra external graphics is, is kind of a challenge, uh, you know, especially if you're really tight with space, but then again, you know, it's an ultrabook, this thing is so small, um, and eGPUs, they have really, really small eGPUs uh, that work really, really well, unfortunately, so many of them are sold out, uh, Sonnet just released literally three more, at least, uh, portable Sonnet breakaway pucks on their website, you can see. They're all AMD, unfortunately. There's no NVIDIA options. But unfortunately, really, all, all of these uh, Sonnet uh, eGPUs are really, really expensive, going from $300, which is the one I have. It's the RX 560, all the way up to $900. And I think that's the AMD, uh, the 5600. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong on that, but that's $900. This is a, you know, really uh, a big... This is this is really really expensive, you know, for an eGPU just because, um, you know, you're you're paying a, a huge premium to have a portable eGPU. The card that's in my eGPU, the RX 560 4 gigabyte version, when it launched in 2017, the MSRP was $99. A $99 graphics card in 2020 2021 is. $300 just to have an, an eGPU and this is not a powerful eGPU although uh, you know it does get the job done but I imagine the MX450 would probably be comparable actually I'm gonna do some I should have uh, looked it up before starting this video but it seems plenty capable uh, from the videos I've seen on YouTube even though it's it I don't think it does ray tracing at all obviously um, but yeah, this is something just to keep in mind. I've done a lot of research last few months since I've had the Galaxy Book Ion. Um, you know, I've gotten all into this world of external graphics 
uh, just out of necessity because the ion that's a huge downside to this device is it does not come with a dedicated graphics card uh, and the more research I've done uh, I've kind of realized you know I in a, in a way I really do wish that I actually did a little more research and bought a somewhat of a gaming gaming laptop now you could go crazy with gaming laptops I know you could spend four thousand dollars three thousand dollars on an alienware that has a desktop size cpu full-size cpu that you know you need two power bricks to plug into a wall because it uses that much energy that's crazy that would be annoying to lug that thing around but i'm thinking of something more in the middle like the gel the dell g5 or dell g7 that comes with uh you know for example an rtx 2060 uh, six gigabyte. My brother actually has that, the Dell G7. I'd love to do some videos on that device uh, next time I see my brother. Um, and uh, that seems like a much better value proposition because not only do you not have to pay extra for an external graphics card, and by the way, graphics cards are really in high demand right now. Even old ones are really hard to get. Um, it's just kind of the best of both worlds because, you know, yeah, you don't have a super super ultra light portable laptop like the ion a uh ultrabook but it's not as bulky as you know an alienware uh computer so yeah that would just be something to keep in mind as you do research on what computer you want to buy i'm a huge samsung fan i have a lot of samsung devices uh, I currently have a Galaxy Watch Act 2. My last two phones were the S8 Plus and the S5. I'm looking at getting the S21 Plus when it comes out. Uh, and, of course, the Ion. Samsung's a great company. You know, they, they make really awesome tech. Uh, but if I could go back in time, I would definitely reconsider the need to get this Ion just because it's a Samsung. You know, I I, I feel that I have a wide use case of my uh, my laptop you know I use it for video editing a little bit you know watching videos of course YouTube I've used it for school emails for you know word and PowerPoint and all these things uh, but I'm also a gamer I enjoy gaming and it's it's fun to game when you're on the go you know I've downloaded and purchased a lot of PC games um, in recent months and that's been kind of fun especially since I haven't had access to um, you know, TV while I've, while I've been traveling, uh, while I've been staying at, at family members' houses, for example. Uh, it really is nice to have an actual capable laptop um, as opposed to, you know, being forced to buy an eGPU. I'd prefer not to do that, but, um, you know, really it's not that big of a deal. If you can get a good good external graphics card, uh, you can kind of have the, have the best of both worlds, although I would... Before you buy the Galaxy Book Ion 2, coming from a current owner of the Ion 1, I'd really recommend making sure if it's worth getting the Samsung name at the expense of a either having no graphics card, which it might be the case for the American version, North American version, or having a weaker MX450. It might be worth doing a little bit extra research on... For example, you know, the Aorus or Gigabyte laptops, those look really good to me. Those come with uh, pretty good graphics cards. Or the Dells, those are highly customizable, which are great. I've never seen another, you know, laptop company have that much cust customizability options. That's a huge critique I have for Samsung, is that for the American version, there's only two flavors of the Ion, is the 13-inch or the 15-inch, that's it. You can't choose how much RAM you, you have, you can't choose what processor, you can't choose what video card or even, uh, you know, there, there, there is no video card in the American version. If you go on the Samsung Hong Kong or Singapore or Korea website with the Ion, you can choose which processor, if you want an i5 or i7. You can choose if you want 8 gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of RAM. You can choose if you want the 512 gigabyte storage SSD or if you want a 1 terabyte. Um, Dell takes that a step further, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, Samsung just doesn't even give you the option at all for North America. And so, fingers crossed, they will have the American version of the Ion 2 actually have the customizability option where you can choose if you want an i5 or an i7. Uh, you know, if, 
if you think you could get away with it, I'm sure an i5 would be just fine. You know, even if it's still four cores and eight threads, um, you know, of course, it'd be great if they had uh, more cores, especially be compatible with more modern games like six cores and 12 th threads. That'd be great. Um, you know, at least on, on their unboxing, it says the MX450 is optional, which has been the case for the current Ion, but that was only outside of North America. And so I really hope that they take it a different way. To be honest, it. my other criticism of this device is that, yeah, with the current Ion, not only could you not customize it, but it's kind of a pain to open up the back. You have to be really, really careful. I stripped the screws. I had to take it into a computer shop. They had to... You know, it was really hard for the guy. I was really, really nervous. This device is really thin, really light, and uh, luckily he was able to get my stripped screws off and, uh, you know, put in my SSD and put in extra RAM. Uh, but if I had the option, I would have absolutely gotten, have purchased more RAM uh, when I ordered it. But at least, um, you know, other computer makers, they give you the option. And at least Samsung, you know, keeps the door open so you can cut, you, you can technically, you know, add more RAM yourself. I, I can't imagine it being any different on the Ion 2. I'm sure it's still, you can open it, add more RAM, add, add more SSD space. As SSD prices go down, uh, that'll definitely be, be worthwhile. Um, as far as that, it seems like the functionality is going to be the same. I mean, yeah, the Ion 2 will come with Thunderbolt 4, which as I understand, all that really means is that, you know, you're not necessarily going to get more raw performance, but the Thunderbolt 3 con or the Thunderbolt 4 controller will actually be on the CPU, which will uh, get rid of some of the the performance loss that is on the Ion 1. Um, so I imagine just having that con uh, Thunderbolt controller on the die of the CPU, which is mandatory in Thunderbolt 4, that will uh, lead to better performance. Um, because Thunderbolt does have, you know, some bottlenecks and stuff. Um, but the overall speed and everything is going to be the exact same. But nonetheless, Thunderbolt 4 should be an, an improvement. CPU, slightly updated. That should be great. Um, yeah, so really the biggest things that, that Samsung can do are just to make it, uh, you know, more customizable on the website and actually give people the option to have a graphics card. I, that's that's probably my number one thing. Um, yeah, overall though, it's been a great device. Really no other big complaints. Uh, although just remember that, you know, for me, if I could go back in time, I probably would have gotten an actual gaming laptop. You know, my brother got a Dell G7. They had a, a RTX 2060, 6 gigabyte, and if I had that card inside my computer, I would have been able to avoid this whole eGPU mess, wouldn't have had to spend any extra money, take this extra thing around with me. Yeah, the computer would be maybe a little bit bigger, but not that much bigger. Uh, you know, certainly smaller than carrying an ex all these extra cables, you know, Thunderbolt cable, uh, you know, extra plug and, you know, the eGPU box itself and that's kind of been a hassle. I spent $600 on this uh, RTX 2070 gaming box, $300 on the current gaming box that I have right now or the Sonic Breakaway Puck eGPU. Uh, so that's a lot of extra money. So if you're a gamer like me, definitely pay attention to if, it, if the Ion 2 comes with a MX450, if it's even an option if you live in North America. Um, or if you could live without it, you know, that works too. But I've been watching gameplay footage of me playing on my eGPU on the Ion 1, and I look forward to CES 2021. And if you have any questions about the Ion or any hopes and dreams for the Ion 2, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you all so much for watching.